Hi YouTube, I'm Ayman, and today it's a hot summer July day, and my brother, this is his car, he's been complaining to my dad about how hot it is, how the AC doesn't work. And for a car like this, with 200,000 miles, it, there could be a ton of problems, like the compressor's not spinning, or there's a leak in the system. But my dad is certain, since it's 200,000 miles, that it's, there's not enough refrigerant. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to charge your AC from warm to cool. But before that, let's find out if the compressor is the problem or not. So when we turn on the car and we turn on the AC, we see that this belt is spinning. The clutch in the compressor should be engaging with the belt. And I know it's a bit hard to see, but it is right now. If it isn't, that means that the compressor is the problem. So the process is actually very simple and fast. All you need is a can of refrigerant. Uh, we got this 12 ounces for $5 at Walmart. I mean, those $20 ones, those uh, cool advertised ones, they usually are premium. They usually have those things where it's it cools faster. And this is just all right. Uh, you also need this recharge hose. This is $11, around $11 at Walmart. and. That's around $16, but at a mechanic, they usually charge you around $60, um, or maybe $100, oh, because at mechanics, they might persuade you to flush the system. That's expensive. First, let me explain the process before we actually do it. So basically, we have to find where we're going to put this in, and we have to look in over here to f locate the connector or opening. So what we want to find is the low pressure uh, hose. So there are three indicators mainly. So on the caps, there should be the letters. It, so for low ones, it's L and for high, it's H. The next indicator is location. The low pressure is usually in the front and the high pressure is in the back. The low pressure is usually in the front because the compressor is here. You can tell this is the compressor because of this, R, R134A. And the final one, the final indicator, is how big the tube is. This is a big tube, that means it's low pressure. This is a smaller tube, that means it's high pressure. So the high pressure one is really dangerous. We shouldn't go near it when we try to do this. We wanna only stick with the low ones. So before I get to the next step, I wanna talk about the reason why I'm doing this. I have a lot of older brothers. Uh, this is a Mural's car, right? and they're going to have to go through the process of maintaining a used car before they get to wield an expensive one because of course there's a lot of brothers my brother has his asfa has his used uh, car over there and my dad doesn't want to have to go through the process of having to replace it for every single brother so he's asking me to make this video so that they can come back to it in the future and do it so it's simpler all right, let's get to the next step. First off, let me explain the, this hose. So for, for safety reasons, it has a peculiar way of uh, containing it. So basically what you wanna do is with two fingers, you wanna press it back and then you wanna put this end on this connector. And basically what you wanna do after that is you wanna let go and that should secure it. So basically when you actually do it, you want to unscrew the cap. You want to do the refrigerant first, but since we're already filling the uh, container anyway, uh, we might as well show you. First, let me show you. This is cool. There's a needle in here, and when you press down on it, gas comes out. And if that gas is not cool, then that's an indicator of uh, you need to refill. So basically, I put it down with my two fingers. That's why you want to put the refrigerant on first. So next, we're connecting the refrigerant. First, let me show you how the other side of the hose works. So basically, there is a spike at a needle at the end of this end. And when you turn this back side, it makes the needle go further in. That needle is what pokes this through this metal part of the refrigerant. So basically, I 
see it say basically a lot in this video. You want to make sure that you unscrew this as far as it can go so that the needle doesn't touch the metal thing yet. Then you want to first you want to shake this vigor vigorously. We already shaked it a bit so I don't have to do it too much. And then you want to screw it in. And it's hot. Right now, you have two choices of what you can do. You can either first uh, screw the needle in, uh, but that it doesn't matter if you do this first because if it's if the needle is in, the liquid can't get out. Or you can uh, secure this first. But my dad, he's always done it with screwing the needle in first and then connecting it. So even if I make a mistake, we have three more cans. So it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm gonna screw it in now. All right, so you can see I poked the hole in and there's no gas coming out. So right, what you want to do after that is you want to connect the second end with two fingers. And then after that, you want to go to the engine, you want to turn it on and set the AC to max cool. So word of precaution, always make sure you double check to see if this can get out. See, you want to make sure that it's all the way in. And that it can't get out. It's pressurized, so it's a bit harder. Alright, now for the driver's side of things. So, you want... So, you want to turn on the car. You want to turn on the AC. Make sure it's at max AC, if you have that. Then you want to turn the blower all the way on. It is warm. Oh, my God. So, when you turn on the engine and turn on AC, it's going to start sucking all in all the uh, gas. So, what you want to do is you want to unscrew this and you want to shake it upside down and that's going to let all the gas go in that's going to bring it to the compressor so it's going to start becoming cold uh, during that process so let's do it all right so now you want to start shaking and uh turning it i don't, I don't know how to so after advice from a wise sage yeah, he told me the uh, best way to do it is this way, okay? So side to side motion. So during this process, you want to make sure that all the refrigerant goes in. Uh, for us, we don't know actually how much has gone in, but the only way that we can tell is the weight. It used to be heavy, now it feels a bit lighter. However, there's a solution to this. They do sell hoses with gauges that tells you how much is in there, but uh, for us, you can't, there's not any. Uh, it's cold uh, right now, so it doesn't feel cold anymore, so I'm going to pull it out. But even if there's more in there, uh, it's only $5, not that much of a waste. Uh, the can, it says 5 to 15 minutes of shaking, um, but my dad has been doing it for a long time, he only has to do it for like three or four minutes, uh, but you can tell that all the uh, gas is in there since the clutch, you can hear it clicking. So now I'm going to pull it out. So today I learned that if you don't have a hose with a gauge, it's a test of your creativity on whether you can fill all of it. See, there are many things that you can do. You can feel the weight uh, when you're doing it. Uh, it also feels cold, so when it feels warm, that tells you when there's less gas. And you can tell uh, how much gas there is in the final test when you let it rip. And how much hissing you hear tells you how much you lost. And when we pulled it out, it wasn't that much hissing, so we know that we didn't waste a lot. Alright, so there's unfortunate news. We've, re we've refilled the refrigerant, however, it's still not cool air. And uh, we've investigated, and I think we found a problem. See, right there? The clutch isn't fully engaging with the belt, 
and that's causing some something to be wrong. It could be something wrong with the clutch or something wrong with the compressor. Um, but after that, we're gonna replace the whole compressor because they're both one unit. So lesson learned today. If we use a $25 or a $30 refrigerant, we would have wasted $30. Since, you know, if we're gonna replace this, we're gonna replace this anyway. So, I guess there's bad news and good news stemming from this incident. Uh, bad news is a mural, he's gonna have to drive in a hot car for a few days until the compressor that we order arrives. However, the good news is we get to show you how to install a compressor next week. All right, good news. My dad was actually planning to uh, refill the refrigerant here on my mom's uh, car as well because Although it is cool, we want it to be a bit cooler. You, you get what I'm saying? Um, but we want to uh, make it a positive video by showing you uh, it actually working. Because we know here that the clutch actually does work. Alright, <laughs> so let's get to it. I don't need to show too much since you already know the drill, but uh, an exception on this car is the low pressure is actually behind the high pressure. Uh, we're still going to use the low pressure though. So basically, we're going to unscrew the low pressure. Put it like this. And then we're going to make sure this, this is secured. yet all right so it's secured now I gotta poke this in turn on the engine to AC max cool and then unscrew this all right so now we're gonna turn it on we're gonna turn the AC on I think it's probably already on then we're gonna turn this to max AC the blower to maximum speed Alright, so let's do it. Alright. Oh, the AC isn't on. Hmm. Alright. Then we turn it to max. Oh, now it's gonna max AC. <laughs> right. Then we go to the front. Now we unscrew it. Now it's getting cooler, so now you can turn it upside down and shake it. Remember that when you're when you're filling your refrigerator, how much your car can hold. You want to know your limit. For this car, it can hold 22 ounces. For my brother's car, it's 19. So if there's already a bit of uh, gas in there, you only want to have one refrigerant can. Uh, remember, for this kind of thing, less is always more. You don't want to damage the compressor by putting too much. Alright, so it feels a bit lighter, and it's also warmer, so I'm going to take it out now. Just the ultimate test to see how good my judgment is, alright? <laughs> okay, it's good. Now I screw the cap back on. Make sure it's secure. And, good. <laughs> alright, so now we're testing it. So, if you feel your hand over it, you can feel if it's warm or cold. If it's cold, that means it's working, and it did work. Uh, but if it's warm and then cold, or just warm, that means you know it's not working, and it's probably the compressor. For my brother's car, it took five minutes to feel around, and it was only being sporadically cold. However, for here, it only took a minute or two to feel all the cold air come out. So before I wrap up, here's the hole on the refrigerant can. All right, anyway, Today, we learned how to replace or refill the refrigerant in a car. And with that, we came with a lot of knowledge. We figured out how to diagnose the problem, like the compressor uh, being wrong. 
and we didn't we couldn't tell the problem was there because before we filled the refrigerant uh the clutch was actually working fine but when we did uh i guess it had to work more so i guess that's why it broke but it's good that we did this because you can see the how do we diagnose the problem and the success All right i guess this is the end i'm Iman. thanks for watching please like rate comment subscribe look at other videos on i and Iman. and keep looking out for that next video on how to uh, replace the compressor all right mechanic i'm on out peace so next we're connecting the refrigerator